presenting the first case for today a 42 year old male with alleged history of rta between a two wheeler and a rickshaw diagnosis grade 1 compound right distal 1/3 tibia fibula shaft fracture with proximal fibula fracture without dnvc the operating surgeons for today are dr vasudev gadegone and dr chetan pradhan the pre op x rays for the patient plan for today is open reduction internal fixation with plating for fibula and close reduction and internal fixation with an interlocking nail for tibia thank you thank you let's move on to the operation theater please chetan hi good morning good morning sushrut so uh, i'm just waiting for gadegone sir to come in the meantime show us that compound nature of the leg no what uh, as we had decided on the plan hmm. i have uh, i have done the started with the fibula plating if you can uh, yeah see this i have begun with the fibula plating but meanwhile let me move on to the x ray you have already seen the x rays there but if you see this hmm. can you see it yes yeah chetan the on left side there is a x ray which is uh, projected so go on yes so it's a lower third uh, tibial fracture there is a fracture line going down towards the ankle and uh, we believe that there is uh, enough working length for a nail so this is a kind of an extended indication for distal uh, tibial fracture for nailing but uh, okay uh, chetan let's talk only about fibula why did you fix fibula so uh, the plan as decided by both of us was to start with fibula plating so that uh, we get some length and the reduction of the tibia becomes easier okay let me stop you there hmm. this fibula is a segmental fibula so yeah. even if you fix lower down yeah do you think you can stretch it out to length yeah at the fracture zone it will definitely help alignment and second reason for fixing the fibula is that it is within the 6 cm of ankle mortise yeah. and therefore it will require as you can see here it is almost at the syndesmotic level that the fracture is fracture line is there and therefore we will need a fixation of the fibula in this case so till the time you kick start the case can you tell us the indications wherein you will fix the fibula yes so my indications are usually 6 cm above the joint line if you have a fracture line then we are looking at an unstable ankle uh, because of the fibular fracture so i always would want to fix the fibula in that case also where you have a tibial fracture concomitant along with a fibular fracture in that area i always fix the fibula first and then nail the tibia is there any instance when you will do the tibia first and still do fibula fixation later mm, i prefer doing the fibula first because then you get the rotation see the fibular length and rotation has to be exact if uh, there is any discrepancy in that and you have fixed the tibia first then getting the fibular reduction becomes very difficult yeah so somebody was suggesting this was a compound grade 2 case is it uh, compound grade 1 or 2 sushrut yeah sushrut uh, you are not audible uh, uh, chetan i have got a question to you yes if you fix the fibula when you try to get the reduction for tibia you are planning to do nailing sometime you lose the fixation of the fibula so i would rather put the guide wire in the tibia first then fix the fibula then again go and back and do the nailing of the tibia that's what i normally do okay sir that is uh, shiv shankar sir good morning gaade gaade sir gaade gaade. good morning it is a just a adduction and external uh, this pronation uh, adduction injury as you see in the ankle so uh, the fracture of the fibula is so distal it is only applicable when there is a fracture uh, within the 5 uh, cm of the uh, lower end of the uh, fibula in that case it is possible that you will may not be able to get the reduction 
but in this case it's a spiral uh, commutated fracture i think uh, reduction is not an issue only maintenance of the length is an issue so fibular fixation yes it's a controversial whether to do a first fibula or a second fibula but we have decided here to do a no, no there is no fibula. controversy every book and every paper says that a fibula has to be fixed first yes but my reason is Sometimes we lose the fixation of the fibula during manipulation. So I normally put a guide wire in the tibia first, then fix the fibula. Yes, yes, but that yeah. is more applicable in a distal third rather than in the at the level of the malleolus. Thank you, sir. Gadigone, sir. Yes, sir. This one doesn't fit into that category, but the type of fracture you are talking about is spiral lower third or lower fourth fracture. Yes, sir. Where fibula and the tibia both are gone, yes. you must do a CT scan. There is intra-articular by default fractures in 85 percent. Oh, that is only within when the fracture in the… This, this is not of that type. This is different. Yes, yes. Within three to four centimeter uh, within the uh, ankle plafond, uh, that CT scan should be done. But we have seen here the articular surface of the distal tibia is well uh, maintained and there is no suspicion of an intra-articular fracture. <coughs> Therefore, uh, CT scan is not mandatory. But yes, in a distal, uh, extreme distal tibial fracture, CT scan is mandatory. And in that case also, if undisplaced fracture is there, then also you can do a, a nailing uh, by addressing first that the split Simple or crack fracture. Simple. So, uh, I am Dr. Abhay. Uh, if you'll permit, I have a few comments to make. Uh, the first one is that it's basically uh, there is a very strong rotational component with an axial, uh, axial force on this particular injury. So which has uh, uh, oblique to a spiral kind of a configuration of the fracture on the distal third of the fibula, just supraendosmotic or at the level of this endosmosis and it has a short oblique uh, tibia fracture in the lower third or lower fourth with combination. So my worry in doing a definitive fix, the, so that's one. So in such a situation, the first thing I want to do is also visualize uh, the knee and the periarticular tissue of the knee because invariably a lot of times they will have knee injuries as well. That's, that's the second point is that in these situations where I have a combination of the tibia, I would like to, to temporarily stabilize the fibula first just to get length rotation alignment which is important to help reduction of the tibia rather than having a definitive fixation of the fibula because then uh, with the amount of combination of the tibia, if I fixed a relatively uncombinated uh, fibula first, I stand to leave gaps at the tibia so as to which will probably be a day one failure. So I want to stabilize the fibula, not do a definite fixation and then uh, do a tibial fixation first and tibial fixation then and come back to the fibula and revisit and finish the fixation of the fibula. So those are my uh, two pennies worth of uh, thought. Okay. Gadegona sir, you have scrub in the meantime. Yes sir. So the bottom line is Ch Chetan, yeah, spiral. Are, are you happy with your fibular fixation reduction fixation? So more spiral, more yeah, non-comminuted the fibula. Fibula first comminuted, just pan it out to length, restore the height of fibula, do tibia nailing, and then definitive fixation of fibula. Uh, Chetan, uh, if you look at the ankle mortis. Yeah. Are you happy with that uh, reduction sure. of fibula? Sure. See this. So there is a, like pointed out, there is a spiral element there. Would you prefer a longer plate and uh, remove that third screw from the top? Yeah, that's, that's a, just a spiral chip. Uh, okay. Uh, not, not, it's a flick. It's not, okay. if you okay. see this. All right. Where is it? Stop. Shoot. So should. Yeah. You use the same implant 3.5 or nowadays lots of 
So this dedicated fibula plate tends to go a little more uh, distally uh, with an oblique uh, screw shoot, going a uh, little more. So three screws, uh, that's what we should aim for if that's a distal uh, sixth yeah, or yeah, eighth yeah, yeah. fibula fracture. Shoot. And this is the close reduction of the tibia that I'm getting. Shoot. So the, if the fibula is uh, reduced well and fixed well, Tibia falls into place. Yes. Makes your life easy. Now, like suggested, I may not hesitate to undo the fibular fixation if required. But definitely, uh, it would give me an advantage if the fibula is aligned in order to reduce the tibia. Yeah. Uh, Shiva, you will do anything differently now once we have done fibular fixation already? It's a non-comminuted fibula, oblique, and uh, tibia has, you know, fallen into place now. What's your take now? What is the question? The, quest is the, the question is, oblique spiral fibula, lower yes. fourth. Yes. We have done definitive fixation of fibula. Tibia has fallen into place. Do you agree with this? Situation? No, I don't. I don't think so. No. Yeah, this yeah. fibular mal reduction is going to harass him. And as Shiva rightly said, this is one of the rare occasions where I violate what book teaches me, that you do the ankle part of the fracture first and then do the tibia. All those situations where ankle and lower third Supra tibia is involved, I do the tibia first. Lower I third. don't commit completely by putting Supra that distal locking bolts. Sure. But Shiva? Yeah. Yeah, I said already because I normally put a guide where go ahead with the fibula fixation, then I come back and do the fibula final, Sir, uh, tibia final fixation. That's my routine. Okay. Jignesh Bhai, good morning. Question, samjha, na? Question is, you, you have a fibula fracture and you have a tibia fracture, lower third. Fibula is non-comminuted oblique spiral, which can be reduced well, if reduced well. Now, do we fix fibula first or do tibia nailing first? I will do fibula first. first. Uh, I will reduce it 100 percent. It will make my life for the tibia easy because spiral fracture sometimes aids to the displacement of the tibia fracture also. Yeah. If you reduce the tibia fibula well, then you can get tibia will be very easy then. You just apply percutaneous clamp, get tibia reduction 100 percent, get guide pin and nail. Sure, sure, perfect. Abhay, do you want to revisit your decision now? Yes, so this is absolutely in sync with what I do. So I will not do a definitive fibula fixation first. I will reduce it, hold it, put in a temporary stabilization, do my tibia, and then come back to finish the fibula. That's what I said in the first go. Again, with a mal-fixed fibula, what we are going to do is, even if we are going to pull the fragments together, we are going to force reduction onto the fragment, and we are, if the fracture does not heal in time, then we are going to have some give somewhere down the line on the fi fixation. Perfect. The other thing is that with the combination, it is always going to be difficult because your tibial length and your fibula length are compromised. So if the tibia has more combination and the fibula is relatively uncombinated, so let we are going focus, to leave behind again. Let me focus on that point which you are bringing again and again of comminution. Would you screen the opposite side tibia and fibula to assess the amount of comminution and loss of uh, yes, fibular height, considering that fibula is also comminuted and tibia is also comminuted. If fibula and tibia both are comminuted, then one can stabilize with an anatomic fibula plate first just to get length rotation alignment and do the tibia fixation first. And this, as I was discussing with Jignesh, this is a, a 2A, 2B, 3A, a 2A, 3B, a 3B. These are perfect cases where I will do a fibula stabilization and do a primary LSU. Okay. Sampath, your take on this. I, I agree with it, sir. I will reduce first tibia. I will put on the guide wire. 
and uh, see that I reduce fibula as well. Don't get committed with the definitive fixation. First, reduce both, like radius and uh, reduce both. Don't get committed with one bone. Fixation is different, but reduction is different. Achieve reduction on both bones and then get committed. About fibula, uh, hmm. use the under contour plate, a straight plate, under contour plate that will just support it. And then you have some uh, uh, flexibility to fix the definitive fixation. Mm. It will just support a posterolateral plate, screw at the apex, don't put it across the fracture site, put a guide wire in tibia, achieve reduction of both, and then committed, get committed with the fibula fixation. Okay, so let's okay. talk about fibula plate. Dedicated fibula plates are very tough. They uh, do not easily mold. Shoot. Yeah, now see sir, now this is probably Chetan sir has used the anatomical plate of fibula. I have issue with this is, this is these are anatomical plates. So don't, they don't yield reduction for you. You Sampad, have to you, are, you are right, I would prefer a one third tubular here. Yes. Because so, it will give me a better reduction. Yeah, so, so Atul has something to contribute here on this. I, I, I hardly use anatomical plates. My preferred uh, implant is one third tubular plate in all cases, mm -hmm. whether it is comminuted or non comminuted. Yeah, Good. for two reasons. One is anatomical plates, you have to achieve reduction. Plates won't achieve reduction for you. Lateral you have to achieve correct lateral. reduction and then fix it. Another issue is one third tubular plates are always under counted. And posterior lateral border is the best border to put on those plates. And they sit on very nicely. They push the posterior lateral fragments anteromedial. So, beauty of the anatomical plate is that uh, if you have a comminuted fibula, you can use it in biological mode Chetan, when you are as starting a spanning fixation and just take care of your length, rotation and alignment and then finish your uh, uh, tibial sure. job. The steel sure. pin there. Chetan, when you are starting tibia? So we are about to start. Now, okay. Diagone sir has changed the plan to a suprapatellar nail. Okay, over to you. Uh, he, he wants to demonstrate a suprapatellar entry and approach. For distal tibial fracture. For distal tibia. Okay. So initially we had kept a standard tibial interlock. Hello. Hello. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, question to the panel is, I mean, supposing instead of this, you know, the tibial fracture is a comminuted one. Supposing if it was a transverse fracture, then could we have just done a well, minimally invasive nail for the fibula instead of an open plate? If the fracture of the tibia was a transverse. Where yeah. you are anyway going to so nail it. The fibula is not amicable to any nailing procedure. This requires a plate, there is no debate. 30 what ml we are talking is whether to fix it first or not. Sister, 30 Asim. ml saline. Yeah. Asim, Asim sir, I don't agree, I don't agree with that. It's a simple transverse fibula fracture, stable, undisplaced. No, he, he said tibia is transverse, the fibula is the same fracture. He said tibia is transverse. Yeah. If that fibula is not communicated tibia and uh, if it is transverse, do a nailing for the tibia. Mother, so if that do. fibula is hmm? transverse, transverse then not communicated, then nailing then is a good option. Then it's a good option. Yeah. Okay. This kind 25. of fibula you plate it. Yeah, ah. definitely plate it. Sister so Mother, so I will so rather put an interfragment. Fibula so can be nailed, so there is no doubt. Fibula cannot be nailed. So, so just doubt. for the benefit of the philosophy of, uh, yeah. of management ah. here, what we are trying to emphasize is that please do not confuse reduction and fixation uh, with each other. So, a lot of times we would do both the reductions simultaneously or one after the other and then stage the fixation. So, if you have a transverse fracture of the tibia with the same fracture of the fibula, you would still want the fibula to be perfectly Okay, let's reduced. move on with the surgery. Thanks, Abhay. Gadegore, sir, you are ready? Uh, within five minutes because that suprapatellar nail uh, uh, tray is coming within five minutes. So this infiltration is always mandatory for you? It is always better, it is not described but I do it. I must see the balatability of the patella, that is most important thing. Because Otherwise what will happen, you will not able to pass the sleeve underneath the patella. So you must see the balatability. Now you can see here, in extension we have to see the balance. Still it is requires... Uh, then, <laughs> and you can see now the reduction part. X-ray rakwa. Infiltration. Uh, X-ray rakwa. Atul, Atul, it is not infiltration. 
it is into the joint is yeah. inflation yeah. inflation so so when you have a tri sleeves and triple sleeves with the uh, disposable sleeves so now we can see sir shiv shankar sir um, yes see my oh. reduction it's a clamp persisted reduction yes. are you happy with the reduction yes yeah yes good and uh, you can see the ankle plafond also clear yes. ankle plafond also now it is uh, i think it's uh, uh, horizontal yes, yes. milin yes sir do you see this thing yes yes so i have done a clamp assisted reduction now what i will do my assistant will hold the foot and a calcaneum he dara tumi and in a desired position and he will not change it i can pass a stin bun pin through the calcaneal also so that it may not come in the way now this is the 20 degree flexion it is more than 20 degree because uh, chetan wanted to do it by infrapatellar approach so we will change slightly again and uh, we will make it this straight this is the surface marking he has done already and you can see here this is the patella this is the tibial tendon this is the tibial tuberosity our nail should be near about 5 to 6 mm below the subchondral bone but in a distal tibia it does not matter very much so our nail point up upper in a distal tibia should be just above the tibial tuberosity so that we can pass at least three screws proximally and here we can pass three screws uh, distally now regarding the your uh, question that whether the uh, this fibula should be fixed or the uh, tibia should be fixed first because i thought now the chetan has done a beautiful surgery for the uh, this uh, uh, fibular fixation because it is a spiral oblique fracture of the fibula and we don't want any mal alignment of the fibula and therefore we have chosen first for the fixation of the fibula now i have reduced the fracture by traction manipulation and just to hold it here by a clamp assisted reduction now you can see the lateral x ray also now in spite of this thing in ap x ray it looks good you may get a uh, this uh, anti curvature or retro curvature in a distal tibia in lateral picture therefore before you pass a guide wire you must correct this so so is the lateral picture rahul dad khub jast khali zala in your question uh, dr milin gajewar here this question Bari is for Bari. chetan pradhan chetan can you hear me ha to bol na yes yes question is because you said this is an extended indication for tibial nailing also you see a line going not quite to the ankle joint but very near to it we don't have ct Ha. so would you put any additional like k wires or some screws thinking that you are you know that might displace as you nail or as you rim just that's my question i uh, i would take that decision if it is displacing but if i get three screws below the fracture line multiplanar screws i would not put any additional k wires or anything you, Atha, you see Atha, that the, no, the question Are is the k wire prior to you starting ah. your nailing so that it does not displace that was my question sir so, now what i did you can see here that there was a some anti curvature which has been corrected by putting a just a pad underneath the fracture side and you can now see the lateral picture uh, lateral picture is it yeah this so uh, are you happy with sir yes 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 so now um we have seen the bilateralability also and yes. now we can see the patella is bilateral here yes our incision will start 1 cm above the upper pole of the patella now dr chetan prathan is doing and i am assisting him there is no issue so give incision the zala ready kele ka sir no number 10 number cha nil ga 10 number milin sir 10 35 i would do the ct for this fracture 30, before 30, taking 30. him in the theater 30. it is given is a must rather then what he will do after sir. giving a incision he will put the artery forcep underneath the patella to break all adhesions the knife the sir anna <coughs> sir do you expect adhesions in uh, un whatever would it may be may not be there but it is always better to take the precaution yeah uh, directly the shot for him 
Bas. So he has given the incision near about two centimeter, and underneath the finger must go inside the patella. And how he has now breaking the adhesion? This is the most important step. You can put a ungli, or you can also put a artery forcep. You can do whatever you like it. But ungli karna hamara Bharatiyon ka kam hai, to ungli karna zada acha hai. So you can see here. Now he will pass his sleeve. So before passing a sleeve, one precaution that towel clip the one. So that sometime it is all possible. It is very difficult for us to muti na ek sister. So Weber clam the neither. So that we can lift the patella. That we can do it. So now he is putting inside. Yes, now it has gone. थोड़ा मैनिपुलेट कर जाओ दे। Right, अजून जाओ। Can you zoom in the surgical screen, please? Artery, no. Now you can see lateral X-ray दाख लो। Lateral X-ray दाख लो। Now you can reach. We have reached the upper part of the tibia. So assistant will hold this thing, asa karun, dharun dharun, and dabun dhe vayet, sir. And then, what do you do? He will pass a guide wire. Preferably, the majority of the abdu time, I put a solid, this rimmer, solid, what we can say, perforator, guide wire, sir. Sir, guide wire, asa, hatha ni taka, hatha ni. It will slid here and there. Lahan guide wire, huh? हाँ से पा हाँ एपी एक्सरे स्लाइटली एंटीरियरली सो थोड़ा सा जो हाँ हाँ दिस इज हाँ तो जाओ दे शूट राइट वी कैन एक्सेप्ट इट पर थोड़ा से खली थोड़ा हाँ अता हाँ दिस इज मार्गेट हाँ नहीं इधर हाँ हाँ दिस इज डी अपर पोल ऑफ़ डी पटेला अपर पोल ऑफ़ डी टीबिया now we will confirm in the AP X-ray. In the AP, it should be in the midline or just mid, uh, medial to the uh, lateral tibial spine. But it does not matter very much in distal tibia, but very much matters in the proximal tibia. Now you can see here. Thoda sir. Now, hammer. Shoot. Thodi hammer kya sir. So while doing this, what are your landmarks on uh, AP, intercondylar eminence? Yes, intercondylar eminence. Medial or lateral? or? Uh, it is medial to the lateral uh, epicondyle, uh, uh, eminence. Now you can see he has passed very nicely and I think we should accept it. Thoda sa verasme, hamara. Hamara. Khali khali. अतः वहाँ शूट मैटरल बातें हाँ आई थिंक यू शुड गो मोर मीडियली हाँ थोड़ा सा कर डू यू वांट टू यूज़ हनीकोम नाउ ना यू कैन यूज़ वी कैन यूज़ हनीकोम है ना प्लेगर हाँ है दूसरी गाइड वाली हाँ जा हनीकोम है ना हाँ तो दूसरा गाइड वाली थी सिस्टर गिव मी अनदर पुट इट इन मीडियल Hello sir. Sir, in the, the same particular fracture, if the fibula is comminuted, will the sequence of the fixation will change? Because now passing of the guide wire or inserting the nail will not be a problem because the fibula is comminuted. So it is not an issue with this. What is more, we are concentrating on the Medial placement of the... Medial curve. No, it's the middle of the middle. It's the middle of the middle. Here, here. Now, let's see. Yes, right. Yes, right. Yes, right. Yes, right. Yes, right. Yes, right. Now, we will accept it. There is no issue. I will correct it afterwards also. Yes, right. Yes. अब देखो, shoot, okay.
ओके नो डोंट वरी शूट सर आप लेटरल डाल रहे उधर डाल रहे हो मीडियल डालो ये लेटरल का पोर्शन है टूट इट ऑन मीडियल हाँ लाइक इधर इधर नहीं ये मीडियल ही है नहीं इधर करो लेकिन आप हाँ ऐसा हाँ हाँ इट्स ओके इट्स ओके इट्स ओके चलो नाउ दिस इज द गाइड वायर दिस इज द प्रॉक्सिमल पिन नाउ यू हैव टू रिमिट रिमर दिया स्मॉल दिया पहले लाहन दिया स्मॉल वन नहीं है so generally what I do, I do a sequential reaming for proximal also in a proximal fracture because if you pass a large 13 and 14 mm uh, reamer for the first time, probably you may land into the fracture propagation. Sir, you want to come on this side? So it is always better to do with the uh, smaller one first and then large. Femoral nails are not But he can do it. ऐसा पकड़ के रखो सर ऐसा। गाड़ी कोने साहब, do you want to check the lateral view once at least before drilling? Yes, we can, we can, we can. There is no issue. First we want to, we want to make first the this opening. That is very important. Lateral view is important before drilling. हाँ, हाँ। देखो, स्लाल दे, छोटा। बस, lateral। अच्छा, अच्छा ठीक है। so uh, delegates if they want to ask any questions they are free to ask questions uh, we'll convey to the hall there is no damage to the cartilage of the patella which is a so uh, now you can see it is a perfect placement in the upper quarter of the tibia so what will happen now just that's all that's all अजून जाओ दे थोड़ा, अजून जाओ, बस। Now we'll exchange the guide wire। तेरे निकून जाए ला? कड़ा कड़ा। Sir, how many supra patellar nails you have removed? That is not an issue with the removal of the supra patellar nail. We can do it by infra patellar approach, because all locking and everything is through infra patellar. Shoot। जाओ दे खाली। जाओ देख, यू देख, यू देख, यू देख, यू देख, हाँ, नाउ देरी जरी कर बेटा, हाँ, अभी, शूट, आता यू देख, एस्क्यूज मी, कैन वी पुट अ ट्रांसवर्स वायर बिफोर राइट वायर और रिमिंग टू प्लेस अ रिमर एंटीरियरली मोर एंटीरियरली, नाउ वी हैव टू चेक इन द एपी आल्सो, चलो थोड़े से मारा है सर, ह हमर तैसे चेतन मला तूला पार्टी देवे लगे ला क्वेश्चन इधर क्वेश्चन इंट्राफोकल वायर यू वांट टू यूज हैप्पी विद दिस प्लेसमेंट विदाउट नो इट्स गुड देर इज नो इश्यू व्हाट इंट्राफोकल वायर पोलर स्क्रूज और पोलर वायर्स व्हाय द गाइड वायर हैज गॉन सेंट्रली यस दैट वाज द क्वेश्चन आस्क दैट्स व Ah, now AP. You can see the guide wire is perfectly in the center in AP and lateral. Yes, good. Thoda maara, sir, yalla maara thoda. Is this the center in AP? Yeah, if you see, just move that clamp. Shoot. Ah, adha pa. See? Okay, chal. Thoda sir, laterally would be a preferred trajectory. We'll do it, we'll do it, sir. Okay. Thik, chal, gyan hai. Reaming, reaming. So question to Chetan. Yes. Chetan, this is a beaded guide wire with a bead a little away from the tip of the guide wire. Yeah. If you do a reaming, it will stop there. Yeah. If then, you have facility of fixed flexible reverse, is that not a preferred way so that you go as far distally as possible yes, considering certainly. this is a lower fourth fracture? We will do it, sir. We will do it, sir. sir okay. Certainly, I would like to go as low as possible. So what we generally do is that once you finish your uh, reaming and when you exchange with the simple guide wire, at the end you, you can do a fixed reamer 
8 mm or 9 mm which is there and you can go till the tip. See, I am using a completely Indian system right now. Most of the guide wires of any of the imported ones you have, have the bead right at the end. So you can ream right up to the end. Solid is solid. Solid then he then has. Kushroth, in this case the bead is exceptionally away from the tip. Normally synthesis guide wire, tip is only 5 millimeters. So, this sir, is more than a centimeter. Here, what has happened, sir? Uh, Negi, sir. Bolo, bolo, bolo. Actually, Ji. the uh, reaming system is not a single unit here. And therefore, we are using a manman -man reamer. Yeah, uh, yeah. Therefore, so, there is that's a what we were uh, asking. If it's a uh, single reamer Ten, uh. without changeable tip of the reamer. You are perfectly right, sir. You are perfectly right. Yeah. I would always prefer a guide wire which has a bead right at the end and sure, sure, you don't sure. need to change it. Yeah, yeah. There okay. is a one more precaution that you can see here. We have to support the fracture while doing a reaming. And that is the most important. Otherwise, uh, with the vibration of your uh, reaming system, you may displace the fracture. So it is always better to hold the fracture while reaming by one of the assistant. It is all so you are going to rim till 11 put a 10 nail? Yes or? sir, we will put the 10 nail, now it is 10 reaming, we will do a 11. So canal is pretty capacious, you can go for 11 also. Uh, it's okay, there is no issue. 11. Good nail reduction. Uh, uh, yeah, we we'll see if the 10, uh, this is the 10 size. If that goes very easily. No, okay, sir. Abhi thoda wire bhi hai. Haan, come. Chal. Shoot. Sundar. One more tip is that when you are doing supra patella, you should always do this constant suction because you are inviting debris into the joint. Sir, uh, why have to? We have to use a, a reamer in the distal fragment. We can uh, uh, ream at okay. the in the stomach and we okay. can pass the nail. Nee. The reaming the distal fragment will display the fracture sir, there. Can you repeat your question? Can you repeat? Sir, why we have to ream so the, the distal fragment? Straight uh, we can ream up to stomach and just pass the nail. Reaming the distal fragment will display the fracture. No, no, sir. Has no. Already. Your reamer should be of good quality. It will not displace. If you are fearing that, you, you can use clamps and you can use uh, additional KYs uh, transfixing it. Actually, what Sushrut was talking about, all of us will make sure that if we are using a 10 mm nail, we make it tunnel just bank subchondral, just above the ankle with a 10 mm reamer. I won't do 11.5 for the distal fragment. I will do that only up to isthmus. But distally, a passage for the nail to seat there will be just above the article. I think your question for your question is different. This is what he was saying that bead is way higher. I think your question is different. You are asking that uh, why ream the distal fragment at all? Is that not what you are asking? 7 mm only, 7 mm reamer is sufficient. He wants to know because of the fear of displacing the distal fracture lines, why to ream? Negi sir, directly put. Negi sir, now you can appreciate the center center position of your this guide wire. Yes, it's perfect, sir. Yes, guide wire, sir. So now he is inserting the nail. We have chosen this is 10 mm. नहीं है काढ़ा लगते हैं काट काट है काढ़ा लगते हैं निकालो ये बच्चों हाँ राइट गाइड वायर नहीं निकाला पड़ेगा हाँ मिंदर हाउ कूड यू डिसाइड द राइट साइज ऑफ द नेल गाड़ी गोने सर वी आर ऑलरेडी मेजर डिट फर्स्ट बट मेजरमेंट एट दिस साइड लोअर डाउन ऑफन गोज है वायर बाय अबाउट नो नो इट इज ऑन द so I am using a same length guide wire here, shoot, worthy worth. You can appreciate the entry point. Is it perfect? This is good, good. Shoot. Yeah. Achha, Chetan, zara ankle dakho na please. Ankle center madhe and. 
अँकल दाखवलं ना नाही दाखवा परत दाखवायचं बरं हे अँकल दाखव रे बाबा थोड मशीन वर शूट कर अँकल दाखव शूट सर आर यू हॅपी Yeah, we are happy. Now the point we are trying to make is just above the ankle level, you will see a very tiny thin line. Your guide wire must pierce that and your rimmer should stop there. And your nail, the uh, tip of rimmer, where it ends, your nail should stop just before that. If in case you want to dynamize later, you will have some space for the nail to go little in. Otherwise, there will be a bone bridge which Tanasar always describes. And since he is there, Tanasar, you want to say something about the bone bridge which gets formed at the end of the tunnel as time goes by and does not allow any further dynamization. This looks center center. Combination. There is no question of dynamization. No, no, I'm just too combinated a fraction. Generally speaking, how far do we go down? And up to up to the guide wire, if you're gone, he has already gone subcondral. Nail cannot go down even if you dynamize anything purpose. Correct. So in a mid shaft, if you're doing it, you yes. put it short of the lower then. So that if you want to dynamize on day one, you can dynamize. Yeah. So, But into the lower one third is not practical. No. Uh, before you I'm came, a, he had uh, used yeah. a guide wire which had a Uh, tip away from the tip of the guide wire. That is the bent guide wire. So if you want to ream, you will have to ream into the unbent guide wire, which you can ream it down and make it subcondral, which is going to be very useful for the lower one third tibia, particularly this comminuted fracture. Plus, sir, in the distal third femur also, Tanna sir, distal third femur also. Yeah. When when you want to seat the nail bank subcondral. you will have to pass the reamer and then hammer with the reamer sitting there your guide wire down so why you don't want to do a distal femur nail in a distal femur nail fracture yeah. which is far better than the uh, integrated yeah kadun ka guide wire yes nege sir nege sir are you happy with the placement of my nail yes sir yes Perfect. very good first class and uh, you see the reduction also yeah. center position now we'll see check it in lateral shoot, shoot. lateral so this is after removal of the guide wire that this is the this is the distal most tip of the nail and yeah. you can't go any further than that yeah. okay you can, lateral you can i think the most important thing is to see the uh, ankle plafond uh, should be in the horizontal position actually nail tends to do uh, a valgus deformity that we have to see otherwise you can put a polar screw and then again Uh, you redirect the nail and uh, your guide uh, guide wire and nail so that we can do it so it's a very simple method it is just now a routine locking is done in the distally we will do three locking and in proximally prior you can see here how it is thoda sa work hai work hai so so demonstrate locking here gaadi ko ne sir yes sir you improved the reduction further when uh, removing the guide wire and passing the nail so, No, that no. was manual oh, yes sir manual because i am holding the fracture still now we can also improve again the position thoda bahar kad do you have any anterior angulation about 5 degree Should. maybe yes yes that i am correcting now ha ah, now ata photo ko hammer hammer yes sir is it okay yes sir it looks no, doctor gadi ko ne uh, yes sir your fibula is not anatomically reduced if you can the, see the yes yes we will uh, right you can see here yes, now i d- better yes better. ideal placement which was previous literature was center center now the literature says in the suprapatellar kneeling the anteriorly slight anterior and slightly lateral to the midline which prevents your valgus and recurvatum deformity so i think it's a perfect placement of the nail and we will do three four locking here sir, sir if you remove the screws in the fibula i think fibular reduction will further improve oh, when you are locking that is not an issue here is issue is the supra patella sir we will in a distal tbl no no right now you remove the screws it will align itself oh proximal <laughs> screws at least okay <laughs> now we will start locking and uh, first we will do a distal locking 
and then a proximal locking. Kar. No, good morning, sir. And so, it is so my question is to the panelists, sir. Sir, if uh, interlocking nail was not an option and uh, we were supposed to use a plate, you are telling that first fix the fibula, then come to uh, uh, come plate uh, plate the tibia, then uh, do that a final tightening of uh, the fibula, then final tightening of the tibia. Is it the process or the process is going to change, sir? This is the commutated fibula and tibia. So in a commutated tibia and fibula. I would strongly suggest you first fix up the tibia into the anatomical position and then put the fibula back because if you try to get the fibula into the normal position, you may not be able to get the fibula back into position, then the tibia position will not come properly. Perfect. Thank you, sir. What has happened here is if you see that the fibula fixation has just two screws proximally and two screws distally. So we have not so away. We have not yet finalized the fibular fixation. It was just a temporary Hello. of the fibula. That's exactly what I'm trying to How explain to the, the, the person yeah. who has asked the question. So How he measured the length of the nail? We will revisit the fibular fixation. Once you measure the length, by tibia if you plan the plating, you will fibula first or the tibia first. That is what it is. Sir, we did that discussion earlier, so his question is a follow-up on that. And what I'm trying to tell him is that what we've done here is, is that this particular fixation is like a temporary stabilization of the fibula. So once you've completed the tibial fixation, now you can take a call on whether you want to improve the fibula fixation or you want, you're happy with the fibula fixation in its cousin current form. Chetan, there is okay, question about from audience. To measure the length Are you happy the with the nail length? He had inserted the guide wire. And he inserted one more guide wire up to the entry site Shoot. and whatever the, both the guide wires are of Shoot. the same length and he measured through that. Shoot. Yes, that, that, that is how you... Who, uh, about measuring length in this di distal third TBRs, best of the times, 50% of the times your nail will be either too long or too short by whatever measure you m measure it. So, take a 8 millimeter nail. What you think is right, it will require three or four minutes of changing the nail. Pass the yes, eight sir, millimeter, okay, okay, you are hundred percent sure that inside right that nail yeah, is longer, yeah. shorter and then choose the right ten millimeter nail. So use a thinner nail as a trial nail. Sir, with the same length guide wire, you can easily estimate the length shoot. Actually, this uh, nail require, uh, this uh, fracture require shoot. near about thirty-five to thirty-six. But for a distal Shoot. tibial fracture, it does not Shoot. matter very much. But it's the proximal tibial fracture. It is most important thing that the placement of the, your nail should be within uh, 5 uh, millimeter from the subarticular. Otherwise, your 4 or 5 screw will not go above the fracture when the fracture line is below Shoot. 6 centimeter Arrayal. of the Six tibial time. platform. So, it is always better Shoot. to... Uh, major Shoot. on the normal limb also you can do that. So that is very important step. Garigune, why did you insist on really no, doing the distal locking first in this situation? No, it is not required, but it's an easier thing because to do. Because you, you mentioned about this is a must that you must first do the distal locking. I feel yeah. in this sort of a community, TBI is not important. You are not no, going it's to... It's not in power, but in a transverse fracture when you want to extract right. the and reduce the com, uh, this gap, then it is very, very important. So in a distal tibia, I have made it a habit of doing a uh, distal locking first because the stability of the distal fragment is much more important and proximal locking is a just, a, uh, a just to complete the procedure. Shoot. <coughs> stability of the uh, distal fragment is very, very important here. So, Chetan Pradhan is going to give a party to all the participants today because he has performed a very nice surgery. Shoot. 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 I think you, you had done the surgery. The party is due from me, <laughs> uh, from minute, you. Chetan ne bulaya hai usko, isiliye Chetan ka mat ka baat hai. Kesa la agle time bulaya Chetan. Chetan had an extremely good assistant. Uh, all should appreciate that this suprapatellar approach he has used and he has not changed the position of the leg. And the CM is going AP lateral around this patient. This is the advantage of this. Once you hold the reduction, Shoot. then you can pass the nail 
from above the knee very easily without no. changing the position of the leg. That is the most important uh, easiness with this procedure. No. So no. I have started using this technique even for all the fractures of the TPF. In the last three years, I have not done an infrapatellar approach. Yes, infrapatellar approach I have done only to remove the nail, but not uh, to insert a nail. So, so Shiva, Sh sir, Shiva, Shiva, Shiva yeah. sir, for this infrapatellar approach, because we are using an angle wooden frame, for even infrapatellar fracture, for this type of fracture, we will not move the tibia at all. But the CM is not that comfortable Siam, like the Siam, Siam what, no, no, you have to put the CM in oblique, I know, but uh, the advantage here is dead EMP, dead oh, lateral oh, of the leg can be easily got without any manipulation. So, so this is also with the angle frame, wooden angle frame, radial and angle frame, it doesn't have a problem for this type of fracture. For upper third, definitely suprapatellar is better. Atul, Shiva. I am happy you started this because Shiva will get hurt about it. For a for a distal TBA, those who are not, you don't have to really potentially damage the patella and everything. You you will be able to get the same job done from the way you are talking about. Sir, sir, Sh Shiva sir, in this particular case for demonstration purpose is okay. We wanted to show delegates a supra patellae. But in a compound fracture grade 2, even if I am using supra patella nailing for something, I will be more reluctant because of the infection going into the knee. You are making a direct intra-articular passage. Legi, sir. Yeah, that's a Legi. point contraindication. Yeah. So they should that. not go with the message that this is the done thing. See, when Shiva and... Adigune is there. It is not worth arguing about this. No, sir, I they will take it. it. I accept it. Don't do it. I agree that in a compound, probably he will do an infra patella nailing. So, Chetan, after this crew, uh, please show us the alignment once in APN lateral. Then yeah. we'll uh, break apart for case discussions. Yes, Just uh, five minutes, sir. You will we'll show everything. No issue. 40. Just five minutes. 40. Doctor Abey, sir. Uh, yeah. Excuse me, you mentioned that in case the soft tissue condition is not good, uh, Elizaro is being used for this type of fracture. In that case also, we played the fibula first and then put the Elizaro. You need a good so the basic philosophy is the same. The device you use basically has to make sure that the, uh, that the damage to the soft tissue and biology is minimal. So if you have a grade 2 open injury, the basic reduction technique will be the same. Instead, I will not put a plate on the fibula or just Chetan, use a temporizing fibula We'll break fixation. for five minutes. No, we'll no, come back to you again because okay. Jignesh has to present his case and, and come back to uh, go to SIOR. The frame in a way that if need be, no if there is resorption of the comminuted fragments, I'm able to do a corticotomy down the line. Okay. In this X-ray, you can see the distal most hole looks like a double hole, figure 8. So, it can be locked 30 degree from lateral side or 30 degree from medial side. It's not a straight anteroposterior locking, it's an oblique locking. What is your preference? You go from anteromedial or anterolateral? Both can be done. Both can be done. So, wh what is your preference? How do you decide that? I go from the medial to lateral, posterolateral, anteromedial to posterolateral. One question. One question is on fibula fixation, sir. Uh, Shushra sir said that there is no chance of nailing, like uh, rush nail or s something. If at all fibula uh, fracture is higher and comminuted, whether you can choose, whether we can choose uh, rush nail for it, sir, or not? If it is comminuted, preferably plating is better, not a nail. But it is higher up, you just want to fix another uh, bone then it's okay, but uh, basically then the tibia should not be comminuted, it should be transverse fracture. If a fibula is transverse fracture, sir, not comminuted? Then wiring can be done. Can be done. Sir said uh, no nailing or no wiring. No, nailing That's can be I very asked. well done in Shushra transverse sir. fracture. <laughs> so if it's a non-comminuted transverse fracture fibula, nailing can be done, is what I said. Absolutely. So another but fibula medullary cavity yeah, yeah. is not all the time will accommodate even two millimeter all the time. Sure. So you'll have to first see the fibula medullary cavity. 
If it is big enough, then it is different thing. Otherwise, yes. one millimeter wire, if you put it, is not good enough. Yes, that is a very valid suggestion. If you have to see medullary cavity. Okay, we'll have a first case. Just one minute. Sir. Uh, Jignesh, sir, just one take, minute. Please take us to the case. There is a tip of fibula fracture. Uh, this is a little bit uncommon scenario. Tip of fibula that should be addressed. Is Weber type one, uh, type A fracture goes for a non-union. Usually in this simple distal fracture, if we have not taken a stress, we are not opening, then somebody will apply a plaster. So plaster was given for three months, then patient presented after removal of plaster another one month with this situation and pain. So female 38 years, presented with domestic injury, undisplaced fracture of lateral malleus, counsel for conservative treatment, BQPOV cast was for two months, presented with antalgic gait and pain at later aspect of ankle after one month post cast removal. So, uh, sorry, we decided for now surgery, this was on table situation, this was before that side before excision of the fibrous tissue and this side after excision of fibrous tissue the fracture side is opening. So that was the instability demonstrated. The fracture was completely open like that. Now, how to fix it? What to do? That was the thing. So, tension band with K-wires. No, no, go back, Jignesh. Go back on this. So, question to Sampath. This uh, distal tip of uh, fibula fracture, do you think this should render this amount of instability or is there any associated ligamentous injury at ankle syndesmosis level also? Yeah. Agreed, sir. Very well said because this is infrasyndesmotic. Per se, only this injury won't contribute to the instability because ATFL attachment is oblique and anteriorly and proximally. So, per se, only if this is contributing to the instability, uh, you should just note down in AP view the lateral process of talus, it is not absolutely corresponding to the calcaneum down there. So, one should suspect something more if it is becoming uh, uh, symptomatic. So, if you suspect something more, yes. is there any other way of evaluating this angle? Yes. So, simple way is to see him standing. So many times these patients have varus, varus heel and they keep on stressing the lateral part. Simple. That is physiological for them, but they have varus in standing position and then they keep on uh, stressing the lateral part. That is why they heal with lengthening or go into non-union or something wrong in the subtalar. See, I am not very happy with the AP view, the subtalar, the way it moves. Of course, now it is only symptomatic at fibula, but we are discussing why infrasyndesmotic fibula should trouble him. So now, options of fixation, either a tension band with k -wires, hook plate, suture anchor or mini fragment plate. So these are the implant options available. The, that small hook plate is not available with me. At, we can convert this one third of the plate into hook plate like this, indigenous, cut two ends and make the hole and curve it. But so the thing was, the was let, very small. Jignesh, let's wait here for a second. Abhay, so are we dealing with only bony injury or also ligamentous injury to tackle the inferior or ankle mortis? So this uh, uh, is definitely not just a bony injury. The yes. patient has pain. If uh, eight months down the line she is symptomatic, there is, I'm not sure if the ATFL is intact. The other thing is that a lot of these patients, if they have a four-foot metatarsus adductus, then as Dr. Sampath said, they tend to open up laterally and that tends to stress an already injured uh, uh, ATFL and the uh, tibia fibula syndesmosis. So this, so just fixing this may not be the optimal choice. I would like to do uh, stress views to see if there is something else happening. The other thing is on the AP view, I'm not very happy with, uh, there are changes, osteoarthritic changes on the lateral aspect sure. of the ankle. So Sampad is not happy, Abhay is not happy with the AP plane. Patient has come because patient sees only that bony a portion, but he has come to you with instability. How did you, Jignesh, assess the instability uh, at the ankle we level? Checked, uh, we checked in the IITV, it was just moving the lateral fragment and little bit movement of the talus in the ankle joint. 
but it was not going for subtalar joint was normal and uh, there was no anteroposterior instability so the two ways I which can i ask both of you to who, assess who talking is, about there is something more than the fibula what is more than the fibula so so the two ways in which i want to check for the instability is one do an mri see if there is any soft tissue damage and essentially i would be looking at taking the integrity of the tibia fibula syndesmosis and secondly seeing if there is anything else happening at the subtalar and the ankle joints and if even after the mri i don't see any distinctive structural changes i would not hesitate to put in a local injection into uh, the particular joint and see if that relieves the pain of the patient on on loading with a brace and that would actually help me uh, as a guide as to where is the source of the pain so just because we see a fracture non union of an avulsed distal fibular fragment we should not jump to the conclusion that that is the source of the pain sir uh, non union of the fifth metatarsal base and non union of the fibula lateral very commonly we see bilateral varus for that patient so he has got a tendency to trip repeatedly in varus so if you are supposed treating them then we treat it with the calcaneal slide as well if at all i am treating say fifth metatarsal base you want it is symptomatic you want to treat non union this Do patient with the fibula would you do anything to the metatarsal or for a for a talus or anything no if i will see clinically in standing position if it is significant along with this this has to be done but along with this something else to be done that you have to see and common is the heel varus so heel varus you will do the osteotomy of the calcaneum and correct it uh, particularly in fifth metatarsal no no here no, here here i won't i won't so, so here no. whatever you i'm sorry i'm trying to be a, a yes. slightly more rough yes here your suspicion 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 how will you proceed then sir first i will like to do the uh, mri to see associated uh, injuries if they are there particularly missed on medial side as well if it is unstable as jignesh bhai has said if you are not done mri then stress views intraop intraop stress views are most important you feel that as uh, as doctor is talk about a fracture like this can injure a syndesmosis uh, it is below syndesmosis yeah. can it in your syndesmosis no it won't okay sampath you said that the, there is a calcaneum which is shifted medially and the talus shifted laterally in this case yes there is definitely heel varus are you going to tackle that part if it is significant yes sir yeah, how you tackle yes la lateral lateral calcaneal slide osteotomy okay <laughs> so i i would put it yeah. i'll put the fibula first get the fibula healing he has been living it for 40 years with this fibula thing if he has a problem then probably you can think of doing a virus cal virus correction on everything but just because he has a non union fibula no. would you go and correct the calcaneum right not at right now this thing not so at so we we agree with tanna sir jignesh what you have done yeah so you these were the options. options the only thing was fragment was very small and uh, fixing with uh, big implants will may uh, crack the fracture uh, fragment or crush the fragment so i use the suture anchor with a fiber wire and uh, tied up like a tension band uh, with a hole in the fibula and uh, under the calcaneo fibular ligament so i could get good hold of it and uh, that is the thing on table perfectly stable it was simple case of non union lateral malus weber type a there was nothing complicated in this so this was good idea to do it and uh, fracture was very nicely compressed and that the post op x ray and everything fall in place it was absolutely stable i asked the patient to come for follow up but did not come uh, see had no complaint no problem and uh, the fracture is united well. really so this is the calcaneal fibular ligament from under this which i have passed that fiber wire and uh, i made a hole in the fibula made a tension band i got suture anchor through the fracture side got both the wire through fracture side out and then sutured like that jignesh jignesh, jignesh can you go back to your x ray please have you put bone grafts in addition no sir doing? it was only 4 uh, months old and uh, when i compressed the fracture i did there was no gap so i did not put a graft okay jignesh i have put the suture Uh, anchor from the fracture side into the bone, or from the down you have put no, down up, down up through the fracture side. I will use. I opened up the distal fragment completely. I put a small spike under it. I got a space, 
I know to use a good cortical I did not enter too much inside, so it will go in the medullary canal and become loose. So I just kept it near the fracture side. And then I sutured it. So there is one, uh, this, I searched the literature for this. I got only one, this article like that. Very uncommon injury. So they concluded that even though unexpected at times, non unions are possible in any age group for many possible reasons. So they have, did not have a very big series also. And all our sporadic one or two cases reported like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we go back to theater. Uh, Dr. Kadegone wants to On a to day show one, if you get this fracture now, would you treat conservatively or you will operate? Take a stress view. If the fracture opens completely, I will operate. This was clear some, uh, why somebody has undisplaced yes, fracture and plaster was given for two months. Chetan. I will take a stress view in this fracture. Me, Atul. And uh, if the fracture is opening, I will fix it. If you it doesn't open, I may take a chance of conservative treatment. You are live now. Okay, so... I have completed the distal locking and the proximal locking. And we are washing the joint and now. See how Gadegone sir is giving a lavage inside the knee joint, which is, I think, of paramount importance to prevent the debris from accumulating. And now you see the alignment of the limb. And we will show you in a minute the entire from the top to the bottom, the AP view shoot. Can you see that? Is it okay? Perfect. Yes, yes. Perfect. Yeah, fine. Come down. You see the distal, distal. Now see the distal. You see, they, so what we, we are worried about the ankle plafond. You can see it's a horizontal. Forget about that comminuted pieces. Everything will heal around the nail. Because we have stabilized the fracture by three screws. And probably we may add a one polar screw if it is required, but in this case, there is a profound from this fracture near about 5 centimeter, may, does not require any polar screw. Now the disadvantage of this nail, which you can see and appreciate, that this screw hole is at the fracture side. Now this should not be there. So I have told him to change the, uh, no, the design. No, we have the three screws. Ah, distally. Distally. Actually, that screw comes at the fracture side. It's not good for distal tibia. So, in, because in spite, it's... <coughs> in spite of that, we have three screws in the distal fragment. Yes, you, yes. Three bolts. Chetan, and you can see Chetan, the... Chetan, this is ETN design. You can go in the other direction also, locking yeah. the last screw. Yeah, we have, we have gone in... And you can see, you see here now, are, this is how it is aligned. Even in the lateral picture also, you can see the... Uh, the curve of that uh, tibial plafond is maintained and uh, you can see the fracture side also. Fracture side, Nakhwa. And uh, these comminuted pieces, they heal around the nail, there is no issue because they are attached with the osteoperiosteal sleeve. This gap will also heal up. If you want to do uh, some dynamization, you can do it after three months, but it is not required because the fibula is already fixed. So. Thank you, you very much for patience here. And Gadi any questions, we are ready to answer here. Thank you very much, Gadi Gone, sir. Thank Hello. you, Chetan. Hello. Sangeet, Sangeet has a question. Sir, one doubt, yes, sir. Sangeet. Hello. Sangeet, sir. Yes. Sir, the last screw, how to get a correct trajectory for drilling the last screw? You never get a perfect round. No, you do even, get Sangeet. Even if you rotate by 30 to 40 degrees. No, no, I will, I will show you. you are, and often you end up drilling the opposite cortex or opposite side of the metal. No, no, that is not true. That is not true, see, Sangeet. Sangeet. I just did the last screw. And if you see this, this is the way the Siam comes in. Come down, come down, quick. The Siam is kept oblique by 30 degrees. Yeah. Or the leg is kept oblique because now you already have four, four bolts in there. And if you see this, this is this is how you get the round hole shoot. Chetan sir, you, do you want to see the syndesmotic stability? Yeah, the fibula is open. I may, but the syndesmosis is stable, Sampat. Yeah. So is it stable? You can see here. <coughs> you can use a hook test a, also. Give me a issue. hook. Distal tibial fracture, most important is to avoid the vulgus deformity, which is so common, not the virus, but it's a vulgus deformity. Now, if you see this, show, show this. Sampat? Yes. Rotate, rotate externally. 
डॉर्सिफ्लेक्शन एक्सटर्नल डॉर्सिफ्लेक्शन कर एक्सटर्नल रोटेट कर No, I am physically testing it, and now if you see this, shoot. Okay, sir. Okay, uh, yeah. Dumre, sir. Okay. Okay, yes, okay. Sir. Chalo, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Chala. Well, well done, well done, surgery, sir. Yes.